we will never never ever settle for less because we know everything that concerns us everything everything that concerns our families everything that concerns our nation is found in you and it's found in your word and so we will never settle for anything that is less than what you're giving us through your word we want to thank you and to honor you because you are calling us to where you are you're calling us to the word of god you're calling us to believe the word you're calling us to live the word and that's what we want to do in the name of jesus we want to thank you this afternoon we bless you and honor you in jesus name we pray say it in jesus name we pray you can give the lord a clap in this place exalt the lord in this place let's celebrate the king of kings hallelujah glory to god yes there is more that's found in jesus give the lord a clap in this place hallelujah you may take your seats you may take your seats in the presence of the lord amen amen ah great there is more that that is found in god amen and what is found in god he has revealed it to us through his word i know we are constantly living in a world that has a lot of challenges we come to this place and we are coming from diverse places we are coming from different experiences in the course of the week and from wherever you're coming from and we come to this place because we know this is the right place for us to be in in the presence of the lord and in the presence of the lord he ministers to us in the presence of the lord we have a word my very very simple assignment this afternoon is to cause you to believe that the word of god is all that you need i don't want to say i don't care about what you're going through because it is huge you only know what you're going through but i want to say even with that what you need is the word of god i want to say this to somebody who believes that what you need in the situation that you are in is the word of god whether it is a court case whether it is a problem in your family whether it be the children that you are bringing up and you're saying they have not amounted to anything that you wanted what you need is a word and we have the word of god given to us this year the year of mounting up and we have talked about this we'll talk about this until the end of the year we this is the year of mounting up in the event you don't mount up and it is 30th of december 2021 you will still have 31st to mount up so we'll, we'll talk about this until the end of the year and this word is found in the book of isaiah chapter number 40 verse number 27 through 31 if you read we find where we get our theme in verse number 31 just give us verse number 31 to be precise and this is what it says but those who trust in the lord will find new strength they will soar high on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not faint in the recent past including today uh, in the second service bishop has been speaking on giving weight to the word giving weight giving weight and also waiting giving weight to the word if you receive the word of god and you don't give it the weight that it deserves then it simply means you're not taking it seriously and so as we give weight to the word your part is the giving weight to the word god has released the word but we need to receive it and give it weight we need to receive it and act upon it we need to receive it and go forth and believe what the word is saying so when we're talking about the word which word are we talking about is it just the word that was given to us this year and i suggest to us that yes but much more than that we need a word for every situation that we find ourselves what word are we talking about even it is the word of god that we're talking about the word of god that has been given to us the word of god like we know it, the bible is the word of god that is our word given to us by god the truth is that that word the source is god himself the source of that word that we have been given by our bishop our overseer he is not the source the source is god himself and so with that understanding that the word is a scripture it is written it is a word of god to us 
we can comfortably say with John in the book of John chapter number one and verse number one that in the beginning was the word. It says in the beginning the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. So we have the word and the word is God. John tells us in chapter number one and verse number one. So we have God in this situation. And if you don't believe it, if you, if you don't believe it verse number 14 of chapter one of uh, the book of John says, that word that we're talking about in verse number one says, so the word became human and made his home among us. We're not just now saying the word, we're saying he, the word, was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. He says, we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. So, the word that we have, we cannot separate that word from God himself. Scripture tells us that the word was in the beginning, and that word, in verse number 14, dwelt among us in the man of Jesus Christ. And so we can also suggest that because of that then, all that you need in your situation is Jesus. You need the word of God, and that word of God is Jesus. And so whatever it is that you're going through, you need Jesus. Now, if we do not give weight to that, if we do not take that as important, then we will talk about mounting up, but we will not leave the ground. We will talk about mounting up, but if we do not believe that word of God, if we do not take Jesus wherever we go, then we will not mount up. And so I suggest that for us to mount up, for us to get to the year and say, yes, indeed, we mounted up in the year 2021, Jesus is all that you need. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is all that you need. Now, I want to go into a few things that we need to know or to note about the word. Just a few things about the word. And then after that, we'll, 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 we'll qualify what we are saying. And then we'll be done. The word of God that we're talking about, the word of God that we're talking about, indeed, Jesus himself, if we as Christians today do not believe that the authority that we have is through the word, then we have no authority. Let me say this in a different way. That the word of God has authority. And if we take that word, run with it, then together with the authority that is in the word, that becomes our portion. Any Christian who does not hold the scriptures in that high esteem as the authority in all matters of faith and practice, I want to suggest to you that those are false teachers. Those are false Christians. I don't know whether there is something like false Christians. If there's a Christian who does not believe the word of God is their authority in the matters of faith and the way they practice their faith, then we have a problem. And so we need to treasure God's word. We need to, 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 to hold it with the highest esteem, to know that our authority is inherent in God's word. And this should be in all our ways. Scripture says in Proverbs chapter number 3, verse number 5 to 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. And when the writer is writing, he knows very well that you have an understanding. And he says, that understanding you have is not what you're going to rely on. Verse number six says, seek his will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. Are you in a position or in a situation where you need to make a decision? For whatever it is, a decision... We have just prayed and we are saying, we are Kenyans, we are not leaving this country. We will pray because this is our country, we are not leaving. Now, for those of us who want to leave, have you asked God? Because that's the path you are taking. Because in all your ways, you need to consult God and he will direct your paths. That's one of the paths that you are taking. For those of us who want to get married, that's a path that you are taking. And we are having several this year. The way it looks, it started well. We already have two in the month of February. It's a good thing. 
in the in the first service pastor Millicent talked about some kids two years was, was it two years was it, was, class two this is a true story it was given in the first service I quote pastor Millicent she's in the service last week there were kids in class two who wanted to get married I don't know which school but it is a true story and they they have seen it this they saw you do it they, they have seen it on TV and they know that when you're getting married you call people and you prepare and so they had prepared they came to, to, to school and they had the attire for the wedding and so a few boys were seen somewhere at the corner surrounding one of surrounding the, the, <laughs> the groom and he prepared because there was to be a wedding and the bride also was somewhere preparing. They had, I hear they had carried home clothes so that it was time to change into the attire for the wedding. The only problem with that wedding is that it's coming a bit too early. Is there anything bad with the wedding? No, please, parents who are here, and we have daughters and sons who are marriageable, and we pray more than, let somebody just come their way. So marriage is a good thing. But for these guys, it's coming too early in the day, in class two. They have a whole <laughs> primary school to clear and hopefully high school and maybe go to the university. And the truth is, in all your ways, whatever it is, acknowledge God. There is nothing too small for God to be acknowledged in it. Whatever decision it is, you want to relocate from Zimmerman? Seek the Lord. I know there are people who have relocated and then they found themselves back. I, and I have nothing against relocating. It is good. When God promotes you and you, you go to wherever, please go with the blessings of God's people. But as you go, as you take that route, it's a path that you're taking. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I submit to us here, there is no path that you can say, this one, I can decide on my own. Because your understanding, verse number five says, you should not consult your understanding. The understanding that we need is God's understanding. So in all our ways, acknowledge God. And we have many ways. We have many ways. We have many things that we want to do. Brothers and sisters, consult God. Because the word of God has authority. We need to acknowledge that. In the book of Psalm, chapter number 119 and verse number uh, 105, it says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. So if I'm taking whatever path, it needs to be lit. The thing that will light that path is the word of God. And so we cannot underestimate. We cannot for a moment wish away the word of God. There is nothing absolutely, nothing absolutely in your place of work, at home, in church, wherever you are, in your extended family, as you deal with your relatives, there is nowhere we are going to overlook God's word. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. It is the lamp, the word of God is a lamp that lights our paths. And so we are saying in uh, many words that the highest authority in matters of faith and practice for you and me is the word of God. Number two. The Bible as we have received it, and I'm not talking about your version of the Bible. I'm not talking about the NIV, the King James, and those other translations. I'm saying God's word given to us, what we know as the Bible today, what is written as the word of God to us, it is the word that was quoted even by Jesus himself. Jesus goes into uh, prayer and immediately after he comes, he's met with the devil. In the book of Matthew chapter number 4, from verse 1 to 4. And a lot of things, a discussion ensues between the devil and Jesus. It says, then Jesus, then uh, was Jesus led up to the spirit, up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. 
And when, he, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth. Jesus himself knew that it is in the word, that there was a word for the situation that he was in. Jesus knew that that word that is given to us, that word that we have received, that word that the apostles quoted, that word that Jesus brought to us, is the only revelation that we are going to have, and we have no other. So, if there will be any new revelation that is coming, and it is not in God's word, I suggest that you would want to question that. So, there is no new revelation that is coming apart from what is in God's word. So, the word of God has been revealed to us. The word of God has been given to us. Any revelation that we are going to get, brothers and sisters, has to be anchored in God's word. In the event that is not happening, it is okay for you to question it. I'm not saying that you throw stones. I'm not saying that you even answer back. It is okay for you to question that revelation that is not in God's word. So that you and I need to be comfortable to say, what does the word say concerning that situation? The problem that we are having is that we have so many Christians who do not know what the word says. You do not know what the word says concerning your children. You do not know what the word says concerning your marriage. You do not know what the word says concerning your family. And so, false teachers out there, and Jude says that some of them have crept in our midst and they are taking us away from the faith, have taken advantage of your not knowing, of your ignorance, in other words, called foolishness. That you do not know then does not become defense reason. And so they will take advantage of us. They will tell us all sorts of things because we do not know the word. Jesus himself quoted the word. That is the revealed word to us. It is the word of God. It is from God himself, from God the Father. When you're faced with a situation, do you have a word to quote like Jesus did? Or the, the, the word that you quote is, you remember there is a pastor that you can call who can pray for you. That is not the word. And I think, I like, this church is a nice church. If you believe with me, please lift up your hand. Because some of us came here and more than 25 years ago, we are stuck here. This is an, a nice church. The other day, Bishop, as he was speaking, he said, there is no pastor who answers prayer. Check. Agreed? No, pastors, you have a problem. You thought you answer prayer. Do you agree? You do not answer prayer. None of us answers prayer. Because nobody prays to us. We, all of us, pastor, bishop, bishop, most right reverend, all of us go to God. It is God who answers prayer. Hello? Are you seated there and you thought the pastor answers prayer? Bad news. We do not even know. We have no clue. Do we pray? Yes. Do we agree with you? Yes. But no pastor answers prayer. It is God who answers prayer. And so we can come to God with that confidence because it is his word, because it is in his word, then we can go to him for whatever situation, whatever it is, even when, that which you think people are not taking it seriously. Amen. We have just said, number three, that the source is God and not any man. Scripture tells us that in the beginning, the scripture we just read in the book of First John, in the book of John chapter number one, says in the beginning. Now, in the beginning of John, that beginning is the same beginning in the book of Genesis chapter number one. It says in the beginning, God created. Now, the God who creates is the source of the word. It is not the bishop, it is not the pastor, so that when the servant of God releases the word of God, it is not his word, it is God's word. 
The word of God will come to us through his servants. Hello? As it comes to us, it ceases to be their word. It is God's word. And so if we believe that word because the source is God, then we can wait for the manifestation of the same. If it does not happen, it is not the problem of the pastor. We will keep waiting. And if it is God's word, one other thing that we are going to see is that the word of God is so true, it has no error, it has never failed. The book of 2 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 19, this is what it says concerning the word that was brought to us by the prophets. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote. For their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and Christ the morning star shines in your hearts. He says, verse 20, above all, you must realize that no prophecy in scripture ever came from prophets own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. No prophet brought their word. No prophet even today is bringing their word. In the event you realize that the prophet is bringing their word, it is okay to think there is something wrong. The problem we have as Christians is that today we are okay to receive everything and anything that is told to us. Because we do not question in the spirit. Scripture talks of the Berean Christians who went to check what the word says about what they had heard. Today we hear all sorts of things happening. And because the man of God said, because the servant of God said, because the televangelist said, so you go and do it. Have you checked that against the word of God? And you know, if you do this, what this will, be, will, will, will do to you is that it will elevate you to a place where you know you have an access to God because we have no mediator. The only mediator between God and us is Jesus himself. Nobody else. Not the Pope, not the Archbishop, not... We have an access to God. So, as a Christian today, you have access to God. Go to God, have fellowship with him. Tell him what it is that you want. Tell him what it is that is bothering you. You have the right to go before God because Jesus, the word of God, has given that access to us. So when they take advantage of you, do not blame that man of God. Because some of them could be in business. They will take advantage of people who do not know what the word says concerning a certain situation. And because you are the kind that do not go to search to look at what was told to you, then you fall prey of that. Not the prophets spoke of themselves. They never spoke anything that was theirs. All that they did was inspired by God. They spoke through the inspiration of God. And that is what we need to understand. Understanding that and knowing that will liberate you and me as a believer today. Very first, allow me to say, because of what we have discussed then, knowing that the source of God, I mean the source of, of, of the word is God, we can therefore without a doubt say that number one, that word of God can never fail. If you have received the word of God, if God has come to you and spoken to you concerning a certain situation and the word of God confirms it, I am here to tell you it might tarry, but it will never fail. The word of God will never fail. You know, Bishop talking about giving weight to the word, I think some of these things, the weight that we need to give God's word is the knowledge that that word will never fail. The word of God will never fail. When scripture talks about things that happen in, 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 in families, 
in, in our encounters, one of the things that we handle in our encounters is the, the kind of patterns that you see happening in families. You know that uh, when your grandfather or your great-grandfather had married two wives, and that one is a good one. Great-grandfather with two wives is, is doing well because most of them is five and above. Now, your grandfather had three. Your father had two, but it is only one that is legit. The truth is, that is a pattern that you need to be very, very wary about. If you don't do anything about it, that pattern might just catch up with you. The good thing is that we have an antidote to that. We have a solution that has been given, and that solution is God's word. In the book of Exodus, it talks about you know, God visiting the iniquity of the fathers to the children and the children's children, to the third and the fourth generation. Just last week, or last, yeah, last week, I sat and heard of a story that baffled me because in a certain family, the story was given about how a son treated the father. And this is what happened. On one of those days, just like you go home, those of us who go home up country, hello, you want up when up country, I'm a in what when I robi, who can do your Okay, so he goes home, and like when you go home, people expect a lot from the Nairobians, including money, which we, we are looking for every other day. So this son goes home, and the father says, before you leave, I want you to do one, two, three. One among the things that he wanted the son to do, ni kwenda kukatia ngombe nepia grass. Those who have cut nepia grass is freedom now that you're not doing it. <laughs> nepia grass? Napier grass, <laughs> especially when it's overgrown and it is hot, you will suffer. So this guy from Nairobi goes home and the father says, Napier grass, we're getting on. And the guy says, Dad, I, 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 I'm in a hurry, I, I cannot do this now. Can I organize that somebody comes and does that and I'll pay them? I actually give you the money to do that. The father says, It's me who has said. And the son gets to a place where he says, Excuse me, I'm not going to do it. He holds the father and forces him to sit down on the seat. He says, Dad, I'm not doing it. But if you want money, I can leave you money for somebody to come and do that work. Now, the story does not end there. That father, whose son is doing that to them, had done the same to the father. This is a true story. You believe me. It's not fiction. I heard it. I saw it. I know the people I'm talking about. And I know, I, when I tell you I know the people, I know them. The same, this, this, this father who this is happening had done the same to the father. And when this, what are you doing? What are you doing in Nairobi? I'm going to do the father of the Nairobian. The grandfather of the Nairobian. The wife was there. And the wife asked, after that kind of a thing happened. Why would that happen? And you're just quiet. You're known to be a very strong and serious man. Why would you allow your son to do that? And after the son had left, after doing whatever he did, the grandfather, yes, indeed, grandfather, <laughs> it's the grandfather, he opened up to the wife and said, I did the same to my father. So that's why he couldn't talk. So when scripture says, when the word of God says that the iniquity of the fathers will be visited to the third and the fourth generation, is it true? And is it going to happen? Does the word of God say? The word of God is final. But the good thing is that we have a way out of some of those things that are against us. We can go for what we want. God has promised in his word. And so if he has promised, he's going to deliver. If there are patterns that you see in your family, it is the same, same word we are going to go back to. That if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and set us free. So we have work to do. Indeed, there is work to be done. We can comfortably say, therefore, number two, that the word of God is without error. The word of God has no mistake. 
The word of God is not about to be you know, taken through a referendum. We cannot debate, we cannot, we cannot alter. We have no opportunity to sit and decide that this clause, we're going to change it. We have no review for God's word. It is without error. The way it has come to us, it wouldn't have come to us in any better way. So the word of God has no error. And if it has no error, therefore, we have no place for us to correct it. We can only believe it and leave it out. We can only believe it and act upon it. Where it says, do not be careful. It is God's word. Where it says, this is the way to go. That's what we're going to do. And finally, it says, it cannot be changed because it is forever settled in heaven. You know when you have, you have documents in your, in, your, in your computer, they're documents that you can change. Now where this is stored, apart from us having a copy, it is stored in heaven. You cannot hack it. it the, the serv even if you opened the service, you cannot change it. It is forever settled in heaven. And that is what scripture tells us. Psalm chapter number 119 and verse number 89. It says, your eternal word, it is a forever word, O Lord, stands firm in heaven. So, this word of God cannot be changed. And so, if the word of God cannot be changed, and it has been given to us, then what ought we to do in conclusion? That word of God given to us is given for everything that we wanted. For correction, for rebuke, for reproof, for guidance, for, for instructions. 2 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse number 16 to 17. This is what the word says. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. All scripture is inspired by God. We say none of the prophets spoke their things. It is God who did this. It is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. So it teaches us. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Let's continue. God uses it to prepare and equip you and me for every good work. My question to us this afternoon, have you given God's word as we have received it, the weight that it deserves? Have you given that word of God that you have received? Have you sought God in that which you are doing? Because that is where the final authority is coming from. In whatever you are doing, in all your ways, are you considering God's word? Or there are things that you consider God's word and there are others that you know, this I'm going to do on my own. And that is the understanding that has been challenged by scripture. What is the word of God teaching you? Because you have received it. We just said it is given to us for teaching. What is it teaching you? Is there something that the word of God is teaching you today? Concerning the situation at hand. Concerning the people around you. Is there anything that the word of God is teaching you? And I ask myself the same question. Because when I see some of those things, and some of the things that we are narrating here are things that are happening around and among us. What is the word of God saying to me? What convictions, what convictions are you being reminded of by the word? One of the things that happens in this church, and that's why I was saying, this, this is a good church. And I know every pastor who is here. If you interacted with Bishop Jimmy, who is our father, and especially when you're coming in for full time, there is one thing that he does not fail to say. And he, did, he said it to me. And I know, I know even Pastor Brian, we have talked a lot with Pastor Brian. He was told the same. <laughs> you know, like when you're coming into full time, Akuna interview in a Fanyikanga, but there is a word that Bishop will never leave out. He says, you're coming to preach. Preach Jesus. And he is done. So that as you do whatever you are doing, as you live among God's people, as you speak, are you speaking about Jesus or are you speaking about your things, your stuff, the things that you heard? He says, as long as you do that, you will never be in error. As long as you preach Jesus, you will never miss it. Nobody will say you are a false teacher. So, what convictions are you being reminded of by the word of God? Did you used to do that and now you have deviated? Have you deviated from your convictions? You knew that it was wrong to be corrupt. Is the word of God reminding you? 
Because you've just landed into this place where money is changing hearts. What convictions is the word reminding you? What errors have we made in the past and we need to correct them? Because we cannot be in error and then continue living in it. As long as the word illuminates that area of your life, that it says this is an error, then we need to correct it. We need to depart from that error. What is this conviction? What is this error that the word of God is pointing uh, to you to address? And finally, allow me to ask, what instructions are you receiving? We have come to a place where we know what is happening today. We don't know what is happening tomorrow. And for us to continue affecting the world that we are living in, God is constantly giving people instructions. And it is not just a preserve of the pastors. You could be seated there and you are a member of this congregation. And God is speaking to you about something that you need to do. It's an instruction that God is giving you to. You need to obey those instructions. It's a ministry within this congregation that is being birthed. And God is going to use you. The problem is that you think it is only the pastor who can... The pastor is not called to birth ministries. He's called, he's, he's called to equip the believers for the work of the ministry. And that is the ministry within you. So you sit there and God is speaking to you constantly. You need to go out, reach out to the street children. But you're saying, but I am not the pastor. What instructions are you receiving? Or maybe it's even concerning your marriage and God has instructed, you have heard it loud and clear. Do not go that direction. And you're saying, but she's the one who did this. Or you're saying, but he's the one who's on the wrong. What instructions is God giving you? Because if we believe God's word to be his word, then we cannot debate about it. We are not going to have discussions. We will move forward and obey. Allow me to say this, that the only way for us to be perfectly equipped for the good work or the work of the ministry is only when we address the situations that we have taught in the book of Second Timothy. If we look at all those, as the word teaches us, directs us, instructs us, then we'll be perfected for the work of the ministry. What instructions have you received? And I know this would have more or less, you know, cut into the Christians more than, you know, people who have not believed or regarded God as Lord and Savior. But the truth is, even for you who has not believed in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are receiving a word. I know this for sure. Before I got saved, I know how many times the Lord called me into salvation and I refused. I said, it's not now. So God is capable. God is able. And he is speaking to every one of us. Is the voice that you're hearing today saying, this is the day of salvation for you? I pray that you do not hearken. You do not harden your heart. Hearken to the voice of God because that word has the authority of God. The voice that you're receiving in your heart, you can identify that's the voice of God calling you to salvation. Are you here? You're not born again. We want to give you the first opportunity. Believe God, God's word. What it says is true. If it says that there's a day that is coming, a day of reckoning, it is coming. We might wish it away, but it is coming. As we bow our heads, allow me to ask this. Are you here and you haven't known Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? You haven't made that very important decision to follow Christ. The one who was in the beginning, the word that was given to us, who became flesh. You have not believed in the only begotten Son of God. I want to give you the opportunity to do that because the word of God is final. The word of God is true. The word of God, we cannot correct it. What it says, it will happen. Scripture says that when the word is released, it will accomplish that for which it was purposed to do. It will not go back to God void. Are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus. If you lift up your hand, we'll see it. We'll pray together. Asking once, are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus? You're struggling. You have this struggle within you. This is the day of salvation. Are you there and you're saying you have situations upon situations where you have decided to lean on your own understanding and so you have not allowed scripture. You have not allowed the word of God to direct you. We want to pray together.
Or you could also be saying, I have a situation you do not know what to do. You need, you need to make a decision. And the decision you're about to make is a very, very important decision. If you're there, you lift up your hand. We'll see it. We're going to pray together. Thank you for those hands. Thank you. Thank you for the hands that are going up. Shall we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you and to honor you that we can come into this place, our Father, and just receive the word that you have given us. Knowing that the word of God is God himself, we cannot separate you from, from, from the word that you have given us. And the word you have given us has every answer to the situations that we could be facing. And our situations are diverse. They are, they are, they are different. They are, they are as many as we are. We pray that in the name of Jesus, that in those situations, our Father, you will come through to us. You will, you will give us a word that we can hold on to. As a congregation, we are saying that this is the year of mounting up. We can only mount up if you're going to believe that word and act upon it. Strengthen ourselves. That part is for us to do. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that every word that you have spoken into the lives of your people this afternoon, I pray that our Father and our Lord, they will have a place in their hearts where they will hold it with the highest esteem and want to obey it, our Father, and go forth to do that which it is requiring them to do. Every one of us in this place, our Father, have received your word. We pray that in the name of Jesus, we'll be faithful and obedient to that word, to the praise and to the glory of your dear name. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you.